Hello and welcome to this video, the first in a series on developing games for the Sega Dreamcast. It may be 2019, but back in 1998, the Dreamcast was the most powerful games machine available and was home to such classics as Sonic Adventure 1 and 2, Dead or Alive 2, Shenmue 1 and 2, and Virtua Tennis 1 and 2. While the Dreamcast lasted only for about three years, it was a very impressive offering from Sega, outperforming even PCs of the time in terms of graphics. You may wonder why anyone would want to still make games for the Dreamcast, but the reality is, if there was any retro console to develop for, the Dreamcast is a very good choice. It is a very capable machine, and being CD based, it's not too difficult to produce your own discs for the system. For me personally, the Dreamcast is one of my favourite consoles, and because of its Windows CE compatibility, I'm hoping I can port my Windows based game to the Dreamcast. Late 2018, I first looked into making games for the Dreamcast, and I came across a tutorial online that got me started, which I'll link to in the video description. This video will be an overview of creating games for the Dreamcast. For more detailed information, please see the tutorial and my website. The tutorial is based around the use of Callistios, or Chaos for short, which provides the means to access the Dreamcast hardware from a C or C++ program. To create software that will run on the Dreamcast, you obviously need to write your code, typically in C or C++, compile it and convert it to a binary file. The binary must then be scrambled and converted into a CD image, which can be run using an emulator or burned to a disk to run on a real Dreamcast. The reason the binary must be scrambled is to combat the Dreamcast security feature, which will effectively render a pirated disk useless if the software wasn't pre-scrambled in a set way. I recommend testing your software frequently on an emulator such as Null DC or Demule, and at key points you should also test on a real Dreamcast. Not all Dreamcast consoles can run CDRs however, so be sure to test with a very simple program burned to disk. There are also other ways of transferring software to Dreamcast, such as over its serial connection, which we'll look at in future video. Dreamcast emulators will typically let you emulate the Dreamcast controller, keyboard, mouse and VMU. You can also purchase a Dreamcast controller to USB adapter, so you can use a real Dreamcast controller when testing your game on an emulator, but be aware that some adapters will not support anything other than a standard Dreamcast controller. Since working through the previously mentioned tutorial, I started to program a simple game, which with every iteration built on the previous to make the game more featured and to test different Dreamcast peripherals. We will now look at the iterations that I have done so far. So here I have my TV, my Dreamcast, VGA box, Dreamcast mouse, keyboard and the CDs that I have burned. So I'm going to show you each iteration so you can see how I've progressed. Now I found even with my Dreamcast, which plays CDRs, it doesn't really like them. And I've had to chop and change different parts from different Dreamcasts even to get this one to work. But it's lovely and clean at least, so that's good for camera. Uh, so this is Move Object Simple. So it's like as basic as you can get. I just wanted to show you on a real Dreamcast, because obviously using an emulator is good, but it's nice to check that it actually runs correctly on a Dreamcast, which you'll see one of the issues shortly. So see my logo, that stands out a bit too much. Unfortunately the logo can't be that many colours. I mean I have the uh, controller as well. So this is just moving a shaded green block about with boundary checking. And this is writing directly to the video memory. So as you see there may be some glitching as it moves. So that's very simple but a good start. We're now going to put in the next iteration when it spins down. Which is move object simple to. Put that all away. Okay, there we go. 
hopefully this one will boot. So, so I have trouble with CDRs running, I'm not, I know I'm not the only one either. There's different techniques to burn CDs, so I'm going to try other ways to see if they run better. Yep, that's booted, that's good. So this is a bit more advanced, and I unfortunately didn't pick the colours too well as I now see on a real Dreamcast. It's my point exactly. This is a textured background and we've got a very simple block which is also textured moving about and it moves about a lot slower but we can adjust the timing and again we've got boundary checking. So it's just using uh, a sprite for the character block whatever you want to call it instead of writing directly to the memory. So we'll turn that one off as well and we'll do the next one which we get a bit more advance. So we put that away as well. So next one is Playfield Simple. Stick that in, turn that on. And that's booting up. The nice thing about Dreamcast you can hear generally if it's going to play a disc because you hear that start up sound. Okay, so now it's looking a bit more like a game. So I chose like a ball-like object for the player character, just as something that is, um, you can animate quite simply. And we can jump as well. This is zooming in for some reason, there we go. Uh, you can jump and there's very simple collision detection. Obviously it's a bit difficult to do as I'm holding the camera. But you can easily go through the objects. It's just very simple. Um, uh, example but what's here differently apart from having now an animated character even with a few frames we've now got tiles so the screen is split up into blocks of equal size and using a definition array just integers we can say I want this type of tile in this area and this type of tile in another area very basic stuff but looking a bit more like a game now so we'll take that one off as well And we'll go on to the next one, which is Playfield with Editor, yes. So we put that in. Skip that animation again. Right, so similar as before, but we've got a few different tiles. Um, same player character, but now if we press E on the keyboard we can go into editor mode and you see we now have a cursor very badly drawn by myself and you can move the cursor about with the mouse. The Dreamcast mouse is a bit unusual because it has a side button. You can't click the scroll wheel. Scroll wheel is not used in this example anyway. So the collision isn't great between the cursor and the tiles because they're tiles, so they take up a fixed amount of space. I could tweak it a bit, but this is just for test purposes. So you can just go on the tile, you left click, and you pick it up. And you can put it down again, as you see, it's because it's it splintered into tiles, it thinks it goes into the next area. So you have to get used to that. But I can, uh, I could improve that in another version, and so it's just testing. You can also press right click to cycle through the available tiles including in the background tile as well and then you can point it down at any time you want or you can press the side button to return it to its original position or its last position if you've picked it up you can also press um, U to do the same thing as the mouse side button or you can press D on the keyboard uh, to delete it which just sets it to background tile and then when you exit by pressing E again it just returns to the game so any changes you've made will be seen immediately but there's no saving at the moment I'm going to do that in a later example okay let's go on to the next one so that's spin down okay so next we have get out that, this one this is play field with text so the Dreamcast has built-in font which covers Western and Japanese characters and Dreamcast special symbols. So I've co uh, copied the characters to a texture and then we can render um, using those characters. 
but I've only used the Western characters and some Dreamcast symbols. So here we see you've got health and points. So I've also added items now. So for example, the heart increases your health. Uh, the 15 increases your points. Like so. And the exclamation mark is kind of like the Robotnik item <laughs> that was in one of the Sonics that takes away. Um, health, it's not really an item you want to collect. We still have the editor as before um, but we also can press start to pause and it gives you instructions so those arrows and the A button and the start uh, symbol uh, are all Dreamcast symbols stored actually in the Dreamcast. But hopefully the thing you can see is how horrible it looks on an emulator it looks absolutely fine but on you know, a composite or even S video connection, it's not going to be great. And this is something to bear in mind if you're going to be developing for a real Dreamcast as opposed to an emulator. So, I did another version which it uses a VGA. So, I need to switch this to uh, PC as they call it, and I need to change this, I don't have the remote, to um, uh, this TV is really annoying. It's gone out of focus, give it a moment while I try and change. This TV is very annoying. PC RGB com will get there. Yep. And there. Okay. It's gonna switch itself off in a moment once it goes into VGA mode for some reason. Okay, this is the last example. Did they not go into VGA? Yep, it's going to power off. For some reason, the VGA mode, it's like, right, we're going to shut off in 15 seconds, quickly. There we go. Now, difference, if it's going to boot, hopefully, you see my logo now blends in GS Soft. I think the reason you can put your own logo is just so, like with the Windows CE symbol that comes up, the games that support you. Now, it might not show so well on the camera, but the text is a lot more clearer now. But the thing is, you should be using a better font anyway. The font inside the Dreamcast is not very good, it's quite thin. So it's just something to be aware of if people are going to be viewing this on the TV, you need a nice large font that people see clearer. At least on VGA, I don't know how well it shows up on the t uh, camera, but it's a lot more clearer now. And everything else is the same as the previous um, example uh, of collecting the items and so on. But I just wanted to show you what I've done so far on a real Dreamcast. For more information about Dreamcast development, be sure to check out my site, which will be linked in the video description. Meanwhile, I will continue to work on the software I've shown you, and I hope in the future to port my Windows-based game to the Dreamcast. Until then, happy coding, and bye for now. Bye.